What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today I want to show you guys some of my holdbacks from the 2020 breeding season. These are some holdbacks that I'm pretty excited about. I've been kind of, a lot of them I fell into and uh, what I want to talk about is how I pick my holdbacks for the year and some of my reasoning for it and then show off some of the holdbacks that I have. So um, generally how I pick my holdbacks are one, does an animal really stand out as like, man, this is a great looking animal, I want to keep it. Uh, no dollar value can really buy that from me. And two, is is there a lack in my collection? So is there a gap that I've been trying to make these animals and I want to raise them up and breed them? So I will make a video going through some of my 2019, 2018, 2017, and so, so on holdbacks that I've said, you know, this was the animal and this is what I want to start producing and keeping. Uh, but I want to sp focus specifically on 2020 right now. So 2020, I've so far have had a fantastic year. I think I've had about 14 or 15 litters of, of boas. I have a couple more litters coming, and then I had a whole bunch of Burmese python eggs. So overall, I'm very happy with the, how this year is going. Um, I did have some really kind of surprising litters this year, and I've picked some holdbacks from that. So what I first want to start with is maybe my first litter of the year, and I want to show you some of the holdbacks that came out of it, which I have in the rack behind me. Um, so I'd say my favorite one from this year is, or I shouldn't say, I, I, like, I like so many, but uh, one of my favorite ones from this year, and it's a happy little snake, is uh, this snake here. So it was kind of unexpected. And so what, what I thought was cool about this animal is I've been, I've been breeding these snakes for the parent snakes of these animals for many years, uh, maybe five or six years. I picked them up as Central American, kind of hypo Central American boas that were uh, possible het for T positive. They produced T positives for me in the past. They've produced some really cool looking babies and I've held a whole bunch of their babies back for many years and I really enjoy everything that comes out of them. I probably have more holdbacks from this, this simple couple hundred dollar pair of snakes that I purchased at a reptile show years ago than any other snake in my collection because I just really like the, what these animals are producing. And if you've watched some of my Central American boa videos, you'll see I have some different striped lines and some just some really cool animals out of that. This was the first year I paired them together and they gave me bloods. And I'm saying, how the heck did bloods come out of this? I was, I've never gotten bloods in any of the previous pairings. I, I have a group of three of them, or, or a 3.3, .3, so three males, three females, and I've received plenty of uh, babies from them in the past. I've, again, I've received some T-positive, some really cool funky babies with stripes on them, but I've never hit bloods before. So what I got with this was T-positive bloods, Hypo T positive bloods, um, hi hypo bloods, hypo T positive, and just some really cool stuff. So I'm going to kind of get off camera so it focuses on the snake hair, but this is a hypo possible super hypo T positive blood. And I apologize, the lighting here isn't the best, but hopefully you guys are getting a good look at this girl. And she's just a really amazing animal that I wasn't even expecting to produce. And... I didn't even know what she was when she came out because I didn't know there were blood in the litter of that. So I did keep a whole bunch of these back. Um, to me, I could, yes, I could buy them, but I just thought it was a cool thing. This is a line that I've been working with, and, and I really plan to explore this. I always kind of had a thought that there could be blood in there because the bellies on some of the previous holdback babies, they were always, like, super red, and there was always kind of a an understanding that it could be there, but I've never produced them. So... Out of all these pairings, this was the first time I got Bloods, which I thought was really cool. And not just Bloods, but some really cool looking ones. I did initially have some people tell me these were not T-positive, but they're T-positive. The more I look at this thing, there's no way this animal is not T-positive. And the sheds are clear. Uh, because they don't have a lot of pattern, it's kind of difficult to make sh to understand if it's definitely a T-positive or not. But, I mean, we'll take a look at this tail hair. Again, the lighting's terrible as I'm pulling closer, but... This is certainly a T-positive animal. So that's one of my holdbacks. And then I have, I did hold back her two sisters, which I'll show you now here. This girl, that girl's in full shed, so we'll leave her alone. And then uh, this girl is probably not T-positive. 
I think this one here is just a uh, soup. It's just a hypo, um, hypo blood. But uh, but a really or maybe a super hypo blood, but a really nice example of it. So just very pretty reds, and and I hope this camera's picking up all the colors on this thing. But just a a really amazing looking snake. So those are some of my blood holdbacks for the year. Um, and then I'll, I'll actually show you another one of the females that I decided to hold back. I did actually just put this girl up on the website, but I'm going to take her back down because I'm not sure what exactly she is. So she's just got a really cool stripe on her and see if we can get this to zoom in. Focus. There we go. She's just got like a really deep, dark red blood color. Uh, she's got some cool striping. I don't think she's T positive, but she's at least 66% het for it, uh, which is cool enough for me. And I really want to start producing some nice high quality bloods. So I do have some other blood holdbacks, but th they're similar to those. Those, in my opinion, were some of the nicest ones that I've, I've pulled out. Some of the other ones that I've holding back um, is I don't have a lot of VPI in my collection. So that's something that I wanted to start to push forward is, is building up some VPI stuff. I do have some cool het VPI things. I do have some, some other VPI stuff, but I think some of the, I want some more visual VPIs. And that's what I was working towards this year is I didn't necessarily want to uh, want to buy them. I just, for me, I like breeding things. I like getting animals and raising them up and breeding them, see what comes out, and keeping some of the cool stuff that comes out of it. So I produced a couple really pretty uh, VPI, Sungle, VPI Sunglo jungles. And uh, I'm going to keep a few of those this year. I did sell a couple, but I wanted to keep a couple of them as well. So just, uh, just to kind of raise up, and I think that they're a cool part of my collection. So that's what I, I wanted to continue with, is these, these VPI Sunglo jungles. And they are pink panther, so they'll they'll start. I don't think the camera's picking it up, but they will start getting this really awesome pink color to them. She already has it. She's almost this like uh, like chalky pink color, but I hope that we can keep keep getting this pink. And I'll show you how these guys progress. But the tail on this girl is just awesome. And man, this camera's camera. The focus on this thing is killing me right now. So uh, so I just thought that this girl was one of my just a cool snake again. Could I buy it? Yes. Is it the most expensive snake out there? No. But for me, it's worth all the money. That's kind of what, what I pick my holdbacks on. Of what, what speaks to me as I'm breeding these animals? Um, as I see them in the, in the litters that come out, is there one that immediately grabs my attention? And to me, again, that's, for, that's why I breed things. It's not to sell things and make money. Um, selling things and making money is just part of it. But why I enjoy doing it is seeing the little gems in the litter and saying, that one's mine. I want first pick at some of this stuff. So that's how I gauge my holdbacks is, is what, what do I want first pick on? Uh, another one that, again, is currently it's on my website, but I'm probably going to hold her back, is this girl here. Uh, she's just a, she's a hypo. She was born a, about a month or two ago. Uh, she's just a hypo jungle VPI. And... Again, most expensive animal, absolutely not, but certainly an animal that I enjoy, and she immediately caught my attention. Uh, I liked her when I saw her, and I decided I'm going to keep her. She's also that Pink Panther line. She was to an RC pastel, and I think overall these babies are just flawless. They really have, they really have just some amazing colors and patterns to them that I do not believe this camera is going to get at all. Uh, what I'm seeing in person is not what I'm seeing on my viewfinder of the camera right now. So I just, again, I, I liked this cool little jungle pattern on here. Uh, I just, I like little unique things. And that's what I, that was, that's what drives me to get my holdbacks. Um, another, another thing I was talking about, you know, what drives my holdbacks are, are there gaps in my collection? So not that I necessarily have a gap in the T-positive area, but I did decide I wanted to keep wanted to keep some of my T positive animals back. And these are just Central American T positives and uh, just really pretty snakes. You know, nothing, nothing amazingly special about them, but I really like them. I mean, I shouldn't say nothing amazingly special. I'm, I'm talking about in terms of newness and you know, it's not the newest, most expensive thing out there, but I mean, that's a pretty animal. And as these grow, 
they're going to get just such amazing different colors of you know blues and turquoise and and just pinks and all these different colors that they they're constantly changing and that's why i really enjoy the t-positive animals uh just a regular central american burke line t-positive i think there's just some of the best snakes that you can possibly get out there in terms of how they change and develop over time as babies as newborns they're not anything that special they look kind of like a dull um, dull looking animal like what you just saw but I know what they're going to transition to as they get older and they're one of those animals that get better as they age as opposed to losing some of that saturation and pattern and colors as they age like some of the other animals so T positive is almost like the opposite of a regular T negative albino is as they age they look better where albinos they they're going to look amazing as babies and it's so important to buy a good looking albino baby because as they get older, they're just going to lose that saturation, lose those pinks, lose those reds, and they're eventually going to dull out. The better they look as babies, the better they're going to look at as, as adults. Uh, with the exception of things like coral lines, which will color up and start getting pink and some really cool freckles. Um, I mean, all the snakes are unique in their own way, so it's really your personal preference. But I, I don't necessarily have a, a gap in my T-positive animals, but I did want to fill some of those. Uh, I thought some of these babies were cool and I wanted to keep them back. Although with the teapots of animals, I have to be honest, is I couldn't pick a favorite. I thought all of them were just really pretty animals. So the way I did that is whichever ones are left by the time they're all sold, I'm going to keep the last two. So the last male, the last female, I'm going to keep them. I have other male and female T positives. I'll start breeding them up and mixing them. Just continues to grow my bloodline, give me different features of them, and uh, I just like them. I can put anything to them. I'm working with a lot of T-positive fire stuff, and eventually I want to put some T-positive fire males and females to a different T-positive line, just to keep changing the genetic pool to the best that I can within each morph that I'm trying to make. So, I don't think I have any other holdbacks this year. I, I held, I had a couple pr fairly simple litters this year. Uh, and there was really nothing that I needed to hold back. Although they were phenomenal babies, I didn't need another hypo jungle. I didn't need any other hypo head albinos. I have enough of those here. I don't need to hold them back. Um, I think that's a really fantastic starting point for a lot of people. And that's where a lot of my, I'll call it my bread and butter animals are made, is from the simple, like a hypo head albino or hypo jungle head albino. Hypo Motley. And we're going to get that in a whole other video of kind of what your best bang for your buck morphs are. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and until next week, let's keep it moving. Thank you guys.